you know, we help people lose weight and we've published our results. And so people ask me about Ozempic. People ask me about Manjaro. People ask me about, you know, Terzepatide and Semaglutide and Zepbound. And so I want to talk to everybody about it because I think that, you know, people should know what's the good, what's the bad. And so I'm going to go through today what's the good and bad of Ozempic and Terzepatide and and semaglutide. I'm going to let you know everything that you should ask your doctor about because I think these medications are important, but they come with some drawbacks. And most doctors, I don't think they have the time to spend with you to talk to you and tell you what those drawbacks are and what what you should look out for. So that's what I'm going to be talking about. Um, The big things, you know, these are medications that are called GLP-1 medications, glucagon-like peptides. Uh, They are used, uh, they are really used They've been in use for a long time, over a decade. Fun fact, it was found from the venom of a Gila monster, right? So this medication, Zozempic, Terzepatide, was found from a Gila monster and uh, the, the, the venom of a Gila monster. And they found that the, the medication did a couple of things. The medication, it uh, increased, you know, how quickly your body released insulin. It also worked on the brain to limit appetite. It also uh, delays gastric emptying, so it makes you feel full. So how do these medications work? It stabilizes your blood sugar, it makes you not want food, and then it makes you uh, it makes you feel full because it keeps the food in your stomach. But that's some of the good things, right? So let's talk about some of the bad things, right? Let's talk about some of the bad things. So, uh, because it delays the food in your stomach, you know, it can cause really some GI upset, nausea, vomiting. It can really give you reflux. Um, it can cause you know, diarrhea, constipation, and the delays gastric emptying, constipation is the worst one. So you really have to understand, you know, that these medications, you know, uh, you know, have some issues. In fact, 50% of people will not stay on the drug more than a year because they just can't tolerate it. So, and that's some real world data showing that 50% won't be able to make it a year. So what are the, what are the, so that's some of the side effects that you need to know about, Okay. You need to know that 50%, you know, basically won't be able to make it uh, for a year. Now, there's some other things that you need to know about, right? If somebody's on a, you know, standard American diet and they take this medication, they can expect to lose a lot of lean mass. In fact, 35 to 40% of the, you know, of the, the weight loss that's seen is actually lean mass, meaning you will lose muscle, especially if you're getting this from, you know, a doc in the box who's spending seven minutes with you you know, you can expect to lose muscle mass. So this is, you know, something that you really need to think about, okay? You know, if you don't change your diet, if you don't consider exercise, you're going to lose a lot of muscle mass. And then when you're unable to tolerate the medication or when it stops working, which is usually one to two years when it stops working, you know, when your appetite really returns back to normal, then you can really rebound and gain weight. In fact, we've seen that when people discontinue the medication, they gain weight immediately and you know, within the year, they'll gain most of their weight back. So these are things that you need to know. The other thing you need to know is that there's a slight increased risk of thyroid cancer with this medication. So um, you know, we knew back when the, the drug was first approved that you would have a slightly increased risk of thyroid cancer because the rats that took it got you know got uh, thyroid cancer. So you know that was you know that was you know and we've seen that play out we looked at a french uh, national database uh, of glp1 users and they actually had more thyroid cancer uh, a newer database showed that maybe it's not as high as we expected so the animal data corroborates what we saw in uh, what we're seeing in humans which is there's an increased risk of medullary thyroid cancer and the other thing is it can cause pancreatitis so meaning the pancreas can get inflamed, you can get abdominal pain, vomiting, you know, it can be really bad. So a lot of times if people drink a lot of alcohol, I'll be very cautious to start this medication. Now, what does it do? It, Like I said, it improves your blood sugar. It's been shown to at the least not cause heart attack, more heart attacks than placebo. And in fact, it looks like it causes less cardiovascular outcomes, which is a good thing. It looks like it you know, just today... Um, that showed that it uh, can help improve sleep apnea. This, the amount of data we have for these drugs is actually more than most other classes. So there is some, you know, really good things about this medication, meaning that if it's responsibly prescribed and docs are, you know, really thinking about how do we, you know, make sure our patients don't lose muscle mass, you know, meaning that they help them with diet and they help their patients figure out an exercise program they can do, 
and the medication could be pretty useful. There's been a couple of, just to come back, you know, 50% of people, once they start after a year, they will not be able to tolerate it. So what does that mean? We need to come up with ways for people to keep the weight off and not regain all their weight back, which is exactly what happened in the trials. And there's two groups that have shown what to do. Verda was able to take patients off of GLP-1 drugs and, you know, which is a Verda is a group that does a low carb diet, very strict low carb diet. They use te telemedicine like we do. They use remote monitoring like we do. And they've found that uh, they've been able to help keep the weight off. You know, it's absolutely, you know, uh, one of the things Verda showed that a low carb intensive telemedicine program can help keep the weight off when you stop these drugs. Another group from Indiana showed that an exercise program can help keep the weight off when when these medications fail or when they stop. As I said, 50% will basically not be able to take the drug after a year because of the side effects. You know, the other thing is, is the people who are able to stay between one to two years, they're seeing a decrease in their ability to tolerate, uh, uh, you know, say, have the same effects from that medication. Okay, so they're not getting the same effects from Ozempic, from Terzepatide and Manjaro. After a year, their sweet cravings come back, their hunger comes back. And so, you know, when a patient really starts on this medication, they really need to think about the long term. And if doctors are just handing this out like candy, they're doing a disservice because patients won't be able to take it over the long term. Most of them will stop taking it within a year. And those who do take it over a year, many will see that their sweet cravings come back and their hunger comes back. And once you stop the medication, if your doc didn't help you <laughs> teach you how to eat, you know, you're, you would have lost 30 to 40% muscle mass, which means that your metabolism is going to be lower when you come off the medication and you're really going to put the weight on and sometimes even more. So in my clinic, we're, we've, you know, have experience with this drug for, said we've been using it since Victoza 10 years ago. But in our clinic, we get really the, 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 some of the worst patients. We get, sorry, uh, we get some of the, the patients with the, uh, um, you know, who really struggle with obesity. Um, you know, because we get these patients who really struggle with obesity, many of them have taken these drugs. And so we're seeing the people who, are, who don't respond to these medications or the drugs don't work for them anymore. You know, so look, the time is coming. There was a time where every week, you know, in the Wall Street Journal, there was another story about lap bands and lap bands were the cure for obesity. And we really know now that, that you know, they're not the cure for the obesity. They never were, although, you know, they were written about just like Ozempic and, and, and Manjaro are, you know, that these medications are, you know, the next cure. They're not a cure. They're a crutch. They're a tool and they're a temporary tool. So I just highly recommend anybody who's on it, anybody, if you've gotten a script from a doc in the box who wrote it to you without talking to you, in this video is all the things you got to know. The benefits are it helps with blood sugar, makes you less hungry. It slows your gut down so you feel fuller. Uh, the, you know, the, the issues are largely GI, the thyroid cancer, as I mentioned, the loss of lean mass, as I mentioned, pancreatitis, as I mentioned. And really after about a year to two years, the impacts on your appetite go way down. So you really need to think about how to eat better and how to, you know, implement an exercise program that you're happy with. So to make this work for the long term, this was helpful, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, this is my first time doing a live on this platform. So I am just happy that you all came and uh, hopefully I'll be able to share this somehow and you'll be all be able to access it. So guys, uh, thank you.